The handheld spectrum analyzer FSH3 has been designed for operation in labs, as well as for on site use for service and maintenance applications. In the upper panel, the analyzer has several connectors. An RF input for N connectors. Input for external trigger or external reference. Connector especially configured for power sensors. Tracking generator output. Caution. The maximum permissible continuous power at the RF input is 20 dBm. FSH3 front panel. 50% of the front panel is occupied by the display and five soft keys whose functions are displayed on the screen. In turn, in the keyboard, different areas can be distinguished, such as Function keys, for different purposes. Alphanumeric keypad for entering numbers and letters. Unit keys. Entry keys. Cursor keys. Setup and status keys. Preset button. The rotary knob. And finally, the power on off button. Basic operation. For example, we want to see the carrier with central frequency 1081.5 MHz. To do that, press, please press trick button and select central frequency by using soft keys. Then enter desired frequency by using alphanumeric keypad, so which I did already. When it's done, please select one of the unit buttons here. So for, for us, it's megahertz. Okay, now let's change span, for example, to 40 megahertz. Uh, now our display shows us only 40 megahertz range of the trace we have here. Uh, we can also say that our x-axis scale uh, has 40 megahertz range from here to here, so, which is uh, 4 megahertz only per division, for example. Okay, next is amplitude. Uh, from here we should change our reference level and range level. Uh, reference level uh, is basically shows you what is the power level be represented by the top of the screen from here. Um, now we have installed negative 20 dBm as reference level and our range set to 10 dB per division so we can see that from here. Let's change ref level to negative 70 dBm, for example, um, by pressing ref level soft key. Negative 70 dBm. Okay. Um, now, from the uh, from the level axis scale, we could see that the ref level set to negative 70 dBm. So from here, we can see it's negative 70 then negative 80 for example. Uh, now let's change range settings as well. The range we have now uh, and we can see from the level axis scale we have 10 dB per division. Uh, let's use 2 dB per division and keep in mind that we can always play with it if we need it. Okay, let's move to resolution bandwidth and video bandwidth located here. Now we can see that resolution and video bandwidth are set to auto. Resolution bandwidth basically shows you how many samples you have or how many times is the span divided. If we change the resolution bandwidth by a factor of 10, the displayed noise level changed by 10 dB. So to get better sensitivity, let's play with it. I'm going to set it to 100 kilohertz. I'm sorry, okay. Here. Okay. Now, let's move to video bandwidth. 
um, if we reduce the video bandwidth, uh, the peak to peak variation of the noise are reduced. Smoothing effect of video bandwidth to resolution bandwidth ratio is 3 to 1, 1 to 10, 1 to 100. So I'm gonna put uh, 100 hertz. Now we have only a few steps left to complete this tutorial. Let's see what we can do with sweep time here. Uh, typically it's set to auto, entire to span, and resolution bandwidth. Anyway, let's take it under manual control and increase our speed time speed from 10 seconds to 1 second. Uh, now we cover our span range in one second instead of 10 seconds which we had in auto mode. Next step we're gonna take is checking out some trace settings here. Uh, hit trace. Typically it says uh, clear and right. That is the one we need now as we want to see live picture what's going on with our trace. Okay from the trace menu you should also check detector settings. Normally it's set to auto as well. Let's set it to root mean square, like here. It will reduce peak-to-peak -peak variation. Uh, actually, we will get an average measure on that. You can play with resolution bandwidth and video bandwidth, but obviously, RMS gives, gives you that much faster. Now, let's adjust our ref level to see the whole carrier. Okay, now it's much better. So the last step you might probably need to set up is marker and measure carrier to noise level. To do so, just hit marker and put it to the central frequency like here or to the peak of the carrier if you want to measure. Then hit delta and move it to to the noise floor or to the noise level so from here you can see that carrier to noise measure we have is 12.9 db okay that's the real basics of it how to use it safely how to use controls and settings now we are ready to download the plot to any computer you might have in the field using an optical cable. Before doing that, please make sure that the date and time are set correctly. So just hit setup button here and drive through the menu you see. Hit soft key, select in general, then using cursor, go to date, press enter and check what date we have. Now we have a correct date installed, just press enter and again go for the same to set time. Okay for us. So it's done. Uh, that's it. You have enough information to get started on using your spectrum analyzer. Good luck in the field. Stay safe. See ya.